we're making our first React application today, and so before we get started, make sure you download this handy little tool called HTTP Sir. It's a little tiny node tool that you can get from NPM, and it allows us to spin up a little web server within any directory that we're working in. So really easy with for just putting up an HTML page. Now when we get started, we're gonna make a new document, and we're gonna include both the React library as well as the React DOM library. And the React DOM library is just the bindings for the virtual DOM to our browser DOM environment. We'll start off by just making an inline script here and we'll call it class hello world. And we'll say that it extends react.component. Now this is a feature that we get from the React library directly. We're making the React component. And every component is always going to have this render method where we're going to re return the actual component itself with the templating. And so again, with React, you're working against a virtual DOM or a virtual representation of the actual DOM. So we're going to say react.createElement div so we're going to make it of type div next parameter will be null we'll come back to what the null means and we're going to say it's hello world and this is the content that we're going to put inside the div so once we actually make the react component that we then have to come to the react dom library and say that i want you to render this component or this app component just like angular or these other libraries we usually have a root component which extends off our whole application so we'll say react dot render and then we'll kind of wrap our hello world component within another higher class component, react.createElement, hello world. We can just feed that hello world right in there. And then we're gonna say, attach this to the root element, document.getElement uh, by ID root. And now we don't have that yet, but this is the main hook that's gonna drive the application. You can have partial areas of your web page React applications, or you can have the whole thing. And so we're making a whole React application. We'll make a div put that ID root there, and now React knows where to grab it. And if we refresh, we get hello world, the same content that we put inside our React component. Now you might be thinking this whole idea of creating React elements by saying react.createElement and then specifying the type is a little odd, especially when you're used to working with HTML templates, and it is odd. So the cool thing here is now we can use JSX, and JSX is basically going to allow us to have familiar typing of making templates, but it's essentially rendering all these templates down to a React call just like this. And so this is exactly what JSX is doing for us. Now to get JSX playing nice in our React application, we need to include this library called Babel. And Babel is another compiler for JavaScript. Just like TypeScript does for Angular, Babel gives us features of the future to use today, and it supports JSX. Now once we have Babel included, we can literally replace this line of code with div and put hello world inside that div. And it makes us feel very at home, very template-like, but under the hood, JSX is doing exactly for us what the React Create Element was doing. It's making that object representation within the virtual DOM. And the cool thing here, since JSX is doing exactly what this statement does, we can just replace the statement with hello world and put it in JSX-like tags. And before we hit refresh, we actually have to modify our script tag a little bit to tell Babel that this is a Babel script. And we'll hit refresh here in a bit and we'll see exactly what we're seeing here. So maybe we'll actually change what we have in the contents. So let's change it to an H1, for example, to just make sure everything still works. And we'll change the content itself to React is awesome. Hit save, refresh, React is awesome. So our React application is working exactly how we expect. And now we're using JSX. And the great thing about component development, no matter what framework you're working in, is the idea that we can pass in values into different components and have them behave or render differently depending on those values. In React, we can do that by accessing the props variable that every React component has. This props variable is the null that we were using earlier. We just weren't specifying any kind of value for the props. So in this example, we'll replace the word awesome with this.props adj. And then we'll on the hello world component itself on the JSX, we'll say adj equals great. And we'll put that in brackets so it renders. And then when we hit save, we can see that that variable is actually changing. So now we've made this component have a dynamic element to it. Now you can name your props variable whatever you want, ADJ. I'm just abbreviating adjective here, but you could call it whatever you want, a foo, bar, whatever. And we can just as easily add other props to the component. Again, any of these variables can be accessed through the props variable within the actual class in the JavaScript. So now we can say this.props.add noun and notice every time i'm using props i'm surrounding it in uh curly braces here so that's telling react that we want to put a variable here we're using some javascript here in our within our jsx and the other great thing about components is that we can use components within components kind of like legos as we said earlier 
and make a large application. So let's make an example of making another React component and then using it within our Hello World component. So we'll say class my component extends react.component as we said earlier. Don't forget the render method and then we will return a JSX template. That's all we need for our my component and then we'll come down to the Hello World and make sure you wrap your main component within a surrounding div. In React, all the components or the component itself needs to be wrapped within a kind of parent div. And then you can specify your custom component just as my component. And then we hit save and you notice it says that this is my app. And you'll also notice within my component, I didn't have an ending tag. I just made the end within that same tag because I didn't need to encapsulate this component within any other data. Now, one of the coolest things about JSX and React is we can actually use JavaScript within our JSX templates, or maybe templates isn't the right word, but just JSX to make really complex return methods. So for example, let's call the my component favorite sports and we'll have a variable of favorite sports and then we'll print that out over an unsorted list element, but we'll use JavaScript to do it. So in our return method, we'll just say unordered list. And we'll set the variable of a const favorite sports equals an array of hockey, football, and baseball. And then in our return method, we'll have the unsorted list, we'll have a list element. But before we do that, we'll actually put brackets to signify that we want to use JavaScript here. And we'll just say favorite sports map. We'll map over that array, get each sport, and then return another JSX template here of list element of that sport. And so we can use very familiar JavaScript methods and calls and APIs that we're used to within this call. So the cool thing, and I think a lot of developers like React is that they can use a lot of the familiar tools that they use in JavaScript rather than learning a whole framework and learning all these tricks of the trade. Like in Angular, we would use something like a directive to do something like this. But if you're very JavaScript centric, you can use these JavaScript APIs that you're really used to. And notice again, when we're rendering variables, just like props, we're using these brackets. So in our return method, we have the li, then bracket and sport. And then we're going to change our hello world to be the kind of main app component. And you'll see this in bigger applications. There's usually an app root. We'll just say app, my favorite sports. We'll include that favorite sports. We have to change the name because we changed the name of the class. And again, we get the new render method of hockey, football, baseball. But now it's coming from a variable that we're mapping over and then returning an element for each of those objects. So this was a good example to get our feet wet with React, but if you're gonna make a big React application, I would highly suggest you use the Create React app. It makes spinning up a React app super easy, has everything we want with the Webpack, the import statements that we like, ES6 support, JSX support, and it's also gonna help us build and bundle our application. And it's super easy to set this up. All you have to say is npm install dash G create React app. Again, make sure you have node and npm installed correctly so this works well, and you don't need to say sudo. So once it's installed, you can just say create React app and then your application and let it take care of the rest. And you notice once this tool runs, when I say create the sports app, it's going to include React, React DOM, and a bunch of React scripts to help us build this application. And once you open up the project, you can see in the source that we get a CSS file, a JS file, we even get a test file, and we get a main file, oh, and it's already wired up to have a nice React application. And we can start it by just saying npm start, and it's gonna take care of putting this on a little node server, and every single time we hit uh, save, it's gonna refresh the application for us. So we can say, welcome to React. So now we have an awesome React app that we can commit to our repositories, and we get a good basis of starting off. Now, just like our smaller example, now we have an app component already ready to use, and you'll notice the syntax is a little different because we have the ES6 imports now. We can just say import component from React, so we don't have to say react.component, and it already has JSX working right out of the box, so that's pretty awesome.